Hey guys, today we will be building this little demo website and deploying it on Cloudflare pages. Um, we will be building it using Svelte, Tailwind CSS, Daisy UI and Cloudflare pages for deployment. Um, I've written up a blog post about this um, and I will make a video taking you through it. So let's get started. Um, the first section on this post is basically some introduction, uh, what we will be building, uh, and an overlook on the things we will be using today. Um, and then we uh, go straight on to what we need to do our things today. Um, in this case, we will be needing Node.js version 14. Uh, we need that version or higher uh, because earlier versions have some problems. Um, We'll also see that coming back in the Cloudflare deployment. Um, so yeah, version 14 or higher will work. Uh, we also need Git. Uh, we will be pushing our code to GitHub, uh, which is a, an online Git repository, basically. Um, so yeah, we need the client application to push our code there. Uh, a code editor. Uh, in this case, I will be making use of Visual Studio code. Um, this is a good editor, it's open source, or well, open source, um, but it works great for our purposes. And uh, this is optional, but we can install the Svelte for VS Code extension um, and include some quality of life improvements like co uh, code highlighting, code generation, stuff like that. So it's an, a nice uh, add-on that we can use. Um, you also need a GitHub account in, in order to make a Git repository uh, and a Cloudflare account to deploy it. Uh, you don't need to add a custom domain to your Cloudflare account. You don't need to use a credit card for anything. It's all free today. So uh, let's get started. Um, well, we have some explanatory material here, so like what is felt, what's the the, the the upper hand uh, compared to other frameworks. Um, for example, Svelte is uh, an, a newer approach to, for example, React. Um, and then we have Svelte Git, uh, which is the full stack version of Svelte. Um, and it's relatable to something like Next.js, for example, um, as it's a full stack framework, basically, which includes static generation, server-side rendering, whatever you need, basically. Um, then we have Tailwind CSS. What is this? How can we use it for our purposes? Um, so yeah, that is some explanation about that. And then we have um, Daisy UI, um, which is basically a component library relatable to Bootstrap, but it is built on top of Tailwind CSS, so we can use all the Tailwind CSS classes to make our product, uh, you know, uniform. Um, and then lastly, we have uh, an, a section about Cloudflare Pages, what it is uh, and how it works basically and what we can do with it. Um, I suggest you read this on your own, go through it by yourself, take the time to read it because um, it contains a lot of information that's pretty uh, interesting, if I say so myself. So yeah, let's get started with the setup. Um, all these instructions are available on the website, jonasclass.be, um, and you can just follow along with this tutorial. This content will not be changed anymore, or maybe some, some slight changes. Um, but first of all, we're going to initialize a project. I've got an empty directory here, which I've opened the terminal in. There we go. We're going to paste this command, and it's going to create uh, an application called my app now. So when we run this, there we go, we get a little starter um, message. So we're going to go for the skeleton project in this case, as we do not need a full demo application. We're going to use a TypeScript syntax because it works it just works better. Um, we're going to add ESLint for code linting to make sure we don't add any uh, bugs to our code or well, bugs we didn't see at first. Um, we're going to add Prettier for code formatting, so our code is consistent throughout the whole project. We're going to add Playwright for browser testing. We won't be using that in this tutorial, but it's nice to have 
once we do get want to use it and it's already uh, added to our project basically. And lastly, we want to use feed test for unit testing, um, as this is uh, also handy to have when we start to add unit tests. Also, this is not for this tutorial, but it's nice to have if you start using unit testing. There we go. It's now created our example application. We can see that here. It contains a lot of files already. That's what this application has done for us. It has just, you know, created uh, this, this uh, skeleton. So now we go into the app directory and we install the application. There we go. It will just take a moment while it's downloading all the dependencies and installing them. Um, it shouldn't take too long. It will depending on your internet speed and latency and stuff, but it will get there eventually. Just let it do its thing, you know. It's all, it looks like it's almost there. And there we go. Now it is completely done. So now we can run it to see if everything has gone successfully. Uh, and oh, I had, had a little oopsie here. Here we go. Now it should work. Yeah. There we go. So now this is our example page that Svelte has generated for us, but that's pretty limited. So we'll start to add some things to it. Well, now I'm going to open this directory. One moment. Uh, it's repositories. My app. There we go. This is our project right now. So let's take our tutorial with us again. And we'll continue the tutorial. So first we're going to install the uh, Tailwind CSS. Um, this is also documented on their website as to why we use all these packages. Um, so let's open a terminal. There we go. We're now adding the Tailwind CSS, both CSS and auto prefixer as development dependencies. And once that's installed, we can generate our configuration files uh, for Tailwind. And there we go. We should now have a post css.config and a tailwind.config. Once that's done, we need to uh, add a feed preprocess to our spelled config. Uh, normally, it should already be there. Yes, indeed. In this case, it is. So we do not need to edit anything about this. All right, then we need to add, edit our template for uh, Tailwind CSS to detect the, conf, uh, the classes in our uh, code, basically. So by default, it's set to nothing. We're going to add this here. So that will tell uh, Tailwind to parse all the .html, .js, .svelte, and .ts uh, extensions, basically. There we go. Once that's done, we can create a base app um, CSS uh, sheet, basically, uh, which includes our, our layers. So if we go to our source and create a file here called app.css and add our um, three beta, well, tailwind components, that's done. But we need to include it still for it to you know show up in our browser. And we can do that by uh, creating a new file called route slash layout dot spelt. Don't forget the plus, it's really important. Uh, and then including it right there. So we're going to copy this and we're going to make a new file. And maybe we can demo the uh, spelt integration. There we go, a layout spelt. There, and it's just created this for us. Now we don't need all of this, it's overkill. We just need uh, a little bit of code. We're going to edit this a little bit still because it's a, a min minor issue. Now, as you can see, this style, style is not consistent. So what we can do here is npm run format. And you know, it will slowly go through all the files and there we go. We now have a format file. 
if we would be if we would run this example right now, we should see that our output is already changing a little bit. There we go. So the, the spacing is completely different, and we can start playing with uh, tailwind uh, utility classes basically. So I can do here text dash xxl, and it should. And I'm saying should because I think I'm to Excel. It's oops, my bad. There we go. It's a bigger text now. So that works. Let's stop it and continue our tutorial. Now we will be adding Daisy UI to our project, which is the component library built on top of uh, Tailwind. So we can just paste the command in there. And there we go. Now the next step is really simple. We just need to add Daisy UI to our Tailwind configuration. So we can just add it to the plugins. There we go. That's Daisy UI basically. It's really easy. So there we go. We're going to run our application again. It shouldn't have changed too much. No, it only changed the background color. Um, and now we can add a little hero section. You know, a hero section is a big blob of text with some subtitles and a call to action or maybe an image, something like that. And we'll do that by creating a new component. So we're going to create a new one under components slash hero dot And we're going to paste our hero code in there. Now I'm going to format this nicely again. There we go, it's nicely formatted. And now we can just, and that's because we have the plugin installed, we can just type hero here, and the tag, and it's going to give a message. We can run our shortcut, import it automatically. There we go. Our hero has now been imported. We're going to format one last time. There we go, it's all pretty. And now when we go to here, we have a hero. Okay, nice. But this is still running locally. We want to fix that. So our next step will be to, um, you know, add our Cloudflare adapter and push it to GitHub. So we're going to add the Cloudflare adapter to our project. We can stop our development server in the meantime. There we go. Now we just have to wait for a little bit. There we go, and that's installed. The next step is quite easy. We just have to tell Svelte that this project will be running on Cloudflare. That's it. Uh, that's all the configuration we need to do now. There we go. Um, and then we're going to create our GitHub repository, or well, our Git repository locally. There we go. We have initialized a new repository. We're going to add all the files and then commit them into a commit message with initial commit. There we go. Yes, I know we want to paste more things. There we go. As you can see, we've added lots of files now. And then we're going to create a main branch like that. Now we're going to set our remote. Um, I've already created. Um, well, no, you know what? Let's let's create a new repository. Um, I can normally go to this link. Yeah, there we go. We're going to call it twenty-three-three-temp-demo. We're going to initialize it completely empty. There we go. Create repository. And then we can just copy this one basically and add it as our origin. So it will be git remote add origin and then the link we just copied. So like git remote add origin and the link we just copied. There we go. And all that's left to do is push our branch to GitHub in, in this case. So if we reload now, there we go. All our files are in GitHub now. All right, pretty cool. The next step is um, adding it to Cloudflare. I already have a Cloudflare account, so I won't be uh, creating a new one. Um, but we will be doing this now. There we go, I'm going to go to my account, I'm going to go to pages, 
and I'm going to create a new project connected to Git. Now, the first time you do this, you will get a uh, connection prompt. You just have to accept it, and then you will be able to see repositories here. There you go. And I'm going to start the setup according to this tutorial, of course. Um, so one of the things we need to do is set the framework preset to Svelte Kit. Uh, here, framework preset will be set to Svelte Kit. Um, and it will automatically fill these fields for us, but we cannot press save and deploy yet because of the node version that we have to set up. Um, it's also documented here. We need node version 16 in this case. We're going to copy that. There we go. And now we can press save and deploy. This will only take a while. There we go. So it's initializing its built environment now. Our Git repository has been cloned successfully and now it's basically building our application. So that can take a while depending on how busy it is on Cloudflare's network. Um, but this normally shouldn't take too long, you know. Um, I think we're already almost there. There we go, it's now building our application. It has been built. And now they're extracting the data and publishing it to Cloudflare's network. So we're almost there. There we go, the upload is complete and it should say that it's done in just a few seconds. There we go, it's uh, deployed. There. Now, it looks like this has not completely propagated yet. There we go. All right, this should work now. Or, well, it should. Um, I think I was too quick with this. Yeah, I'm guessing I was too quick with that. But we can normally just use that one. Uh, why is it not done yet? We can also just request a different name, you know. Um, I have to look where it is. Build some deployments, maybe? No. We should be able to change our URL somewhere. Um, but I don't remember where, actually. Um, yeah, the thing is, it should just work now, basically. We can go, no, that does not work. This might be a bug that we just encountered. Anyways, I've done the deploy with the previous, uh, with the tutorial version here, and that one's working just fine. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. Uh, when it's deployed, you just have to wait uh, for a few minutes, I think, because the DNS has to propagate still. Um, now, if you want more information about where to find the source code for this, so like I have built it, or um, extra documentation about Svelte, Svelte Kit, uh, Cloudflare, uh, Tailwind CSS, Daisy Y components, all those things you can find uh, in the uh, additional resources section of this blog post. Um, and yeah, that's basically a short tutorial on how to do it. Um, so I hope I see you next time. Uh, share this with your friends. Uh, I put a lot of time into making these things. Uh, so yeah, I hope you have a nice day and I will see you next time.